good. How are you? Have you been? Oh, how have I been? It's such a difficult question these days. Yeah. Um, I've been good though. Yeah. I've been very good. It uh, feels like it is on a daily basis, kind of an up and down, like little mini roller coaster every day. Mm -hmm. But generally, recently, I've been very, very good. You're working a lot at the moment, right? Working a lot, yeah. yeah. Um, I found the beginning of quarantine to be this wild blessing in disguise in terms of switching off and lessening my workload. Totally, yeah. Because I was just on full steam at all times um, with commissions and just constantly trying to produce work and pay the rent. And when quarantine happened, I feel like everybody just disengaged and all my commissions stopped coming in, orders got canceled, and there was the initial kind of panic. Mm. And after that first week of what am I gonna do? How am I gonna survive? How am I gonna pay my rent? You know, having the conversation with your landlord, you, I, I for one was able to just switch off and totally surrender to the concept of just taking some time off. I think because at the beginning, I thought there was only going to be a couple of weeks of that. Yeah, definitely. It was that scramble, wasn't it? Of like, yeah. How long is this going to go on for? What yeah. are we going to do next? It was like maybe a month. Yeah. Maybe just a month? Yeah. I don't know. What about you? What did you, What was your initial you thought? Know I mean, for us, it was like, you know, we were on an American tour. Oh, my God. We course. were like two, two shows into it to a six-week tour, and they were just like, yeah, we're going to... We're gonna pull you out of it, like, and it all got so serious so quickly in that way. You had just left. Yeah, we just left, so it was, it was. But we kind of knew going over as well that we didn't like it was already uncertain, you know. So I think, um, I think it took months to kind of like come to terms with everything that happened, you know. Like you were my partner in crime anyway for for yeah. the whole lockdown. So that was another little secret gift that I was given was I, I'm quite a I'm quite good at quarantining anyway. I feel like January, February, I had already been socially distancing yeah. myself to try to get work done and produce at the the amount of work I had to produce to yeah. survive anyway. I actually find that fascinating though, is, is that like your work sort of forces you to be quite alone anyway, you know? It's very yeah. solitary sort of work in itself. Yeah. So how did that like, how did that change like your perspective on it in a, in a position where like everyone's been sort of forced to be on their own and now your work has continued back on forward like how do you feel about that like yeah I feel like at the beginning of quarantine there were a lot of people calling me and checking in on me being like are you okay yeah, like, like hey <laughs> hey buddy are you? and I'm like are, do you, what I do? are you okay because <laughs> yeah. nothing has changed for me I'm a yeah. recluse by nature you know yeah. um but I loved the slower pace. I loved not having to be anywhere, like not having to turn people down and say no to people, like mm. having all of those distractions that I usually do find quite, like that's why I'm all or nothing when it comes to socializing. Like I kind of have to take a month off if I've got a lot of projects. Yeah. I, I, I send a kind of mass message out like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna ignore you guys for the next couple of weeks. Don't for take sure. it personally. And all of a sudden it was like, that that part of my life had was taken away which is the toughest part saying no to your friends and parties and pubs and so to have all of that completely taken out of my control it was like a gift but also to have like the commissions and com kind of more commercial work that I do for all of that to have stopped you know I found myself waking up in the morning and sitting on my doorstep and reading and I was like, I haven't done this. At the porch. I haven't sat on my little stoop and read a bloody book with a coffee so freely in years, you yeah, know? For sure. Um, and then having you, like, also that the two kilometer, yeah. like, that was so intense. Yeah, we and always managed to stay. Our yeah, houses were, like, just yeah. far enough apart that the loop We hit. met, like, <laughs> like halfway yeah. every single yeah. time. Um, and I think just having you as my point of contact was just like, my mom would be like, what are you up to today, love? And I'm like, go to see James. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, Those it was... Those are the nicest. That's my fondest. I think we've been missing that time a lot recently, you know, as we've kind of like gotten back and, you know, with us, we're back riding and things like that. And it's like, it's, it's amazing, but it's almost, uh, you know, it's overwhelming in, in itself, I think, just to, to feel like it's still uncertain the way it's all going to work out, you know, and it's like... 
I think recently I've been missing our days in, in, in our garden on the canal, you know, because it's just... They seem like such yeah. simpler times. Mm. It was like you were, we were sort of like, a, you know, exploring ourselves again as, as individuals and just sort of sitting back and, and, and getting to know yourself again, you know what I mean, from all the time of just working and yeah. being... But also for you and me as, as two friends, we met in the garage bar after one of your gigs and every time after that has been like a real social event bar the times we go out and go swimming yeah. and then all of a sudden we just have this abundance of of really quiet quiet time spent outdoors Definitely. as well which adds like this weird different aspect to it it's like i don't know there's something really organic about it for sure because there's i think there's some days like where we'd like you know we'd meet up and we'd just be like watching stupid videos on youtube for the day and then there but then there was one day where we were just, I was just like, oh, tell me your whole life story. And we both went like two hours deep each. On of like our whole lives. Our whole lives. And yeah. when in, in a like two, like we've been friends for two, over two years. I had such a good cry that day when I got home. I it know, we like, do. So, so, so intense and so emotional. And having to leave when you have to go to the bathroom like that yeah, yeah, adds this yeah, hilarious yeah. aspect to the intensity of it, man. Yeah. But for in sure. terms, in terms of you know work for you because it's been a lot of people have reached out to me and said god your you know your work during the pandemic has been so prolific and i'm like my work is my therapy you know i i stitch to calm my nerves i stitch to ease whatever anxiety i'm feeling so it's easy for me it might look like i'm being super productive but really i'm just that's how i relax i don't watching tv doesn't relax me anymore um stitching does so yeah. for you for your whole life and your career as like a front man mm. you know it's all been taken away from you now how mm. how are you how are you adjusting to this mindset of like your career completely altering yeah i think it's um something that I like i guess we just have to keep kind of coming to terms with that and viewing it from different sort of angles i guess because there's like you know there's so many parts to what I guess I do and then you know when when it was all taken away and we were taken off the tour it was like I was kind of in a way almost relieved for a while because we'd been on the road for so long for a while and and it was yeah it was it was toiling so I got you know I was the ability to to read more and like to focus on my poetry more and things like that and write alone yeah which is uh, I, I, I really I, enjoyed that you know and I think that's actually exposed and just given that side that's better. So it's kind of like, you know, it's put us into a position, I think, you know, where like definitely like not being able to play a show is, it hurts like yeah. every day. For you guys and for everybody that Absolutely, wants to yeah. see you and that's their joy in life. Yeah, definitely. But, but like, I, I think it's like, I get to explore different sides of that. And I think, you know, like for, for musicians or whatever, you know, it's like, and in our position, it's like you're on the road and it's like this cycle, you have to, you're a part of this cycle. But now I think in a, in a, in a sense, this will allow for a better, like the next record we make will be a, a better record, I think, for having been allowed to, you know, take some space away and then actually focus on what we want to say. Well, I guess like the, I always think about bands, especially just from spending so much time with my friends and so many of you guys are musicians, like, I am such a, I'm not going to say I'm an anti-social person, but I'm not, a, I'm not a super social person. Like socializing really takes it out of me. One night a week, like is a lot for me. Yeah. So for you guys to be constantly on the road and engaging with not only the four other members of your band, but your management team and fans and also the energy that goes into a live performance. Mm -hmm. Like I can imagine you guys being on tour and longing for this kind of quiet time to read and and regroup and find the inspiration for to, to keep going yeah. so i imagine in some ways it's like oh a lot of musicians like in my idealist mind it's like oh you guys have gotten probably what you all need but is it now at a point where it's been too long are you just longing to get back out there i think this is at that point where you know i'm I and the people we work with are like, you know, fairly positive about the future, like yeah. about how things are going to progress and, um, you know, a lot of the positives that are already coming back about um, vaccine trials and things like that. And it's like, you have to, you, as a creative, I think, you know, you accept 
your peaks and your troughs and you accept all of those waves for what they are and you actually try to deepen those feelings. So like when I was feeling down, say for example, about, about the pandemic and the future of it, I actually just allowed myself to go fully into that emotion and experience that. And if I needed to stay in my bedroom for three days and, and be with that, then that, so be it, you know? And yeah. When I'm feeling more positive about it, it's, and you get a balance then. I think you get a, a real perspective on Absolutely. what's the, the kind of the truth, you know? It's like, yeah. things will return to normal and it'll be different, but it'll be, it'll be new. And I just think I, I always buy into like human resilience. I think yeah. it's like, there is nothing else, you know? It's, and, and like as, as a universe on a universal level, us all going through something as traumatic as this, whether each individual person has experienced true trauma during this pandemic, because yeah. some people have loved it. Some people have not had a great time at all. Mm. I think everybody's going through their own thing, but having the time to kind of process emotions, whereas before it's like, how did we ever process anything with our jobs, our day jobs, our social lives, like caring for kids, caring for the elderly? How did we ever process things Absolutely, yeah. without an entire day, every day, you and know? Yeah, you get the sense as well that everyone going through that sort of trauma, it's like, I feel like in a way, as humans, you're sort of most connected to humanity in the in the depths of despair in mm. a sense it's when when i feel anyway that i'm most you know even even when it's can, can be stemmed from like a place of loneliness it's almost like you feel like you are the most connected then to everyone around you yeah and when you get that on a global scale i think i think it has changed you know people i think what's frustrating now to me is that like people are almost trying to sort of push through now it's sort of like you know it's been a few months and like you're almost pretending it didn't happen. Yeah. And I can see everyone around me sort of like falling back into and tripping and like you can just see yeah they're they're you know aspects of their of their lot they're just not I think people aren't allowing for themselves to be like okay like this is like still going on you yeah know? the pressures of this are still going on it's like you go outside you know you're, you're going to see your friends but you can still see all this like you know there's PP everywhere there's all these things and it's like those are all signs of like of positivity in a, in a sense all the PPE in the world means of how much we can come together and try and you know try yeah. and make sure it doesn't get any worse and it's all positives but it's still I think it's all mental stress and like absolutely artistically it's hard to you know there's definitely I think we've definitely spoken about this but you know the whole idea that the world now seems to look to us as artists and it's just like well you've got all the fucking time in the world now to entertain us and like you better start like you got all this spare time you better get the record out you better yeah. get this going whatever like luckily enough you know you work for yourself and, and we started our own record label so like we don't have someone telling us like you've got to do a record now and our management team isn't like that so we're kind of lucky but i can see that in creatives that like they can feel a, a burden of of excess time now you know yeah. we're, we're, we're never supposed to have time and now we do have time, but we're not, I don't think anyone's fully running at 100%. No. You know? And I, I, I found through my friends and people that are in the art world, especially in, in Ireland with our ever-changing weather and like, you know, I, 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 I think we've been pretty great with the weather and being able to be outdoors and for all of this to happen yeah. when people can really like experience nature. Like that's the biggest thing. Like people that I know would never go out for a long walk or a swim in the sea or turning to nature for their happiness and their source of you, you know lives. yeah really <laughs> relying on it as their therapeutic space but I know a lot of artists that just have no inspiration whatsoever yeah. like they just have not worked for four months yeah. because they're just so deep in the dark they just don't know how to and I understand I think with some people with like even like visual artists like the idea of having a show Mm. exhibitions like it's it's getting better but it's just there's not as much excitement about it but for me when I got to actually because I survive on com commission work so I'm sometimes feel frustrated that I'm never actually doing the work I want to do and doing what other people are asking me to do but mm. I can't complain because that's what pays my bills yeah. so to have this time to just do whatever I wanted and I remember when things kind of opened up in June, thinking like all of a sudden I kind of needed a little bit of money and I was like, rent day was coming up and I was like, what have I done for three months? Like I wasted three months doing all these pretty little pictures I've been doing. And then 
I realized like I really needed to do what I wanted to do. And all of that work that I did during quarantine, I think I did 15 pieces and like the majority of them have sold. And yeah. for me to sell work that meant something to me and wasn't asked for by someone else is so is like really made me believe in myself and what I'm doing and like sure. god maybe if I just give myself the time to do what I want to do and say no to certain things I can continue on like quite a because it's hard always doing what everybody else wants you to do I'm sure you experienced that as well well, I loved watching watching you go through that and figure that out. Like it was, you know, all those positives that have come from this yeah. time. I realized that like, you know, all the time that we were spending together and then like everyone around us, you know, like Peter Doyle and Zoe Redmond and the lads like Carlos and fucking Fontaines and everyone. It was like all those for me, it was like once I stepped away from the idea that I had to be putting pen to paper to yeah. be productive or I had to be no. you know, writing the music it was more that like when we were all just like going for the swims together at the sea point yeah and you know just getting the swims man like. getting some pizza afterwards hanging out in yeah. the sun I felt more in touch with the idea and the understanding that like creativity when I when my when my like sort of willpower and want to, to live and my lust for life is there that's when my creativity can come out you know it's not from a place of like I need to do this it's like yeah the fact that we were all just living together I was so inspired by you know because everyone there is just such an, an amazing artist in their own right and I just love home that. from the sea where we were just driving home there was like six of us in the yeah. car and we're just going God, isn't this so great? Look at what we're all doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had this <laughs> yeah, like yeah. really proud moment. <laughs> it's like the first time anyone's patted themselves in the back. Yeah, yeah, like look at us all here. Mm. Like it was, but I think. Um, being surrounded by the right, we were really surrounded by a, a super group. Definitely, yeah. You it's and been me, hard to it, watch everyone kind of move away now again. It's been yeah. really, like, difficult. And you and always. me, to have that time with you was so special for me because you were the only person really in my two kilometers. But to have that time with you and then the moment that we were allowed to have more than two people, yeah. like, do you remember? <laughs> yeah. Like, the excitement. Yeah, seeing Carlos and they came back from Mayo. Yeah, mm -hmm. Carlos, Zoe, Peter coming down. It was just, it was so, it was so special. And that's where I really realized that that, I, I, before I thought I had to always be on my own. I used to do all my swims by myself. I was like, yeah. swimming is my therapy. I need yeah. to do this by myself. And then all of a sudden I'm swimming with all of you guys. Mm. And I was going, this is way more fun. Yeah, yeah. You know, this, this thing that we're all doing this together. We're all in the same thing together. Before I thought it had to always be me, I thought I had to be by myself. So I've learned a huge lesson about like, you, know, you don't always have to be on your own, you know? Yeah. It's cause I feel like the last year has been in a, in a way kind of a lonely thing for me, but happily lonely. Mm. But I realized I don't have to be alone to be productive or to create the work that I, I want to for create, sure, yeah. you know? You don't want like a set of ideals to dilute your artistry. Yeah. You don't want to like be stuck in a yeah i have to work this way yeah yeah especially spending time with people like in different doing things that are in different creative fields you know yeah. like it's it's just been such a lesson for me yeah it was such a bubble as well i remember like the first time of like maybe not so long ago that like other people started coming in you know and they weren't like from creative paths and i was like i can't really speak to you yeah. i don't know what to say what, what are we talking yeah. about you know <laughs> But that was that was very much you and me as well at the beginning. Like we really ran out of things to say. I was like, well, I got to go to the bathroom, so I guess I'll yeah. go home now. And everything unfolded in that in that slow manner for a while, yeah. Jen, and then it sort of started speeding up. Yeah. Speeding up, and now it feels like yeah, I can't. I'm not gonna like. I can't help but like just be sort of positive about the future for mm. for everyone's like own path because I've seeing how quickly we can adapt and change to you know still do what you do but realize that like maybe taking on little bits of other things as well or like little bits of different you know even if it's your own routine it's like that's what keeps it free and keeps you out of the dark i think you know yeah i also think like i had to remind myself last week i found myself going into like a little bit of a not a dark place but in a like when is this gonna end you know when yeah. When am I going to be okay able it to, was dark. It, it was a little bit dark, but yeah. it wasn't anything crazy, but it was just, 
when, when am I going to be able to freely hug my family and not worry that I've infected them? And, and I, I got into a weird little funk and I, I just took a, two days and I just sat in my house and I read books. I went for a big walk, I went for a big swim and I was reading poetry and I was going, God, like artists, poets, writers, they've documented this sort of trauma before sure. and that for me was the most hopeful thing like I, I, I kind of forgot to take that pause because I was so focused on doing my own work um, to take that pause and, and go back to to what other people like people like our own in our own country people that have you know written about the famine and like what we've been through as a nation like we're very strong the whole world like it was it was a lesson for me like to not focus on, you know, this isn't the end. It was very positive for me to look back and go, there is hope there. Um, but to take the break to to read about it, and I don't think people often have the time to do so. Yeah. You know. No, definitely. And and this is just this is a little blip, but everyone's going to come out of it. Yeah. You think? Yeah. <laughs> There's weight to the blip. But There's weight to the yeah. blip, but but it's it's been it's been good for me. It's been tough, you know, yeah. but... Yeah, you, you see it almost like it's gonna reflect. It's exciting to see how like, you know, as an artist, I think I'm always aware of the fact that like, as things happen, we can sort of force ourselves to try and uh, reflect them immediately. But I'm, yeah. I'm really excited to see how this will come out, you know, through our work in the coming years. Cause I yeah. think that's really when it shows will be yeah, over it's the not next, immediate. Over the next decade or whatever, you know, yeah. it'll really, you know, it'll come out of our pores then in, in a real sense, you know. Yeah. So you're sort of, you know, you're sort of uh, running around there just trying to pick up the little pieces of it and understand what's going on, but the, the whole sense of it, I think, yeah. is yet to come. I, I, remember, um, I remember my dad saying to me once, like, I was very young at the time and really annoying. I was kind of like a dog. I'd just follow him around the house. And I remember him sitting down and I don't know what he was doing. He might have been smoking a cigarette and reading something. And I was annoying him. And he said, darling, I'm working. And I said, no, you're not. No, you're not. You're just sitting there. You're not working. I can talk to you. And he was like, no, you don't understand. And he sat me down. I'm, I was maybe six or seven. He was like, I'm an artist. When I'm thinking, when I'm sitting in silence, I'm working. He was like, it's very rare that I get to sit in silence and work like this. This is where I, I this is where my, my work comes from. And I remember that sticking with me and going, God, when do people actually have the time to sit down like that when their, their phones aren't in front of them or their laptop or somebody's calling them, you know, to sit down? Because this would have been in the 90s, you know? Yeah. And uh, I really experienced that. I was like, I am working now. Even when I wasn't working, a little bit of guilt about, you know, not being productive slipped in. I was like, no, no, I'm working. I'm gathering thoughts and inspiration and not to sound too wishy-washy about it. I was like, I really needed that time to think about my life and think about the times and what everybody as a whole are going through. Yeah. Um, and remember that that is part of the work, like the, the universal work that everybody should be doing, not just artists, not just musicians, not just writers, but everybody as a whole, mm. like to, to be okay. So, yeah.